Bloody hell, are we still doing these? Ba, 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 ba. Yes, it's Loot Crate time again. Time to see what the old Looty Crato people are up to. So we haven't done this for a while, and they are kind of the original mystery box of whatevers. This month's theme is something. <laughs> I forgot to look it up. <laughs> Last month's was horror that I didn't do. Does that help? No, it doesn't. Well, let's see. In oh, that's right. Let's see inside and see what's going on. I thought I hadn't cut the sound tape there for a minute, but I have. So, oh, craggy. Um, well, most of the box is taken up with this gigantic Q fig of Doctor Strange. There he is, looking all strange and fighting his evil opponent, Doctor String, who's a doctor who just chucks bits of string at people. Look, he's not been well. Give him some time. Yes, um, this is based well. Looking at the design, yeah, it is indeed the movie Doctor Strange, played there by Humperdink Bandersnatch in all his glory. It's done very well, incidentally. I think it's um, taken more money than any of the other um, single superhero debut films that Marvel have done recently. So good for you, everyone. Anyway, yes, what's this like? Slightly out of proportion and a bit of a waste because it's nicely designed and nicely painted and sculpted and... All the usual detail and stuff is in there, but tragically it's got this kind of cutesy thing going on. Not nearly as bad as a Funko Pop, at least it's not a sort of annoying generic thing, but still not something I would personally want. So I shall give that to my friend Matthew, who actually looks a bit like Doctor Strange. He was the one on the right. Anyway, there's a t-shirt as well. What is this t-shirt? Oh, it's from Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Or Fantastic Beats and Where to Drop Them, the amazing music-based sequel. Right, um, we have writing. It says, <clears throat> Become an Obliviator! Recruiting now! Every half moon of the month. M-A-C-U-S-A. -A. Well, I haven't seen the film yet, so I don't know what the bloody hell that um, response is. What is an Obliviator? It sounds like a bad thing, is all I can say to that. But it's quite a nice t-shirt. Although, interestingly, on the uh, viewfinder of the camera, it looks like a really bright blue, whereas a very dark blue in real life. I've never seen such a weird dichotomy between the colour in real life and on camera. I shall try and alter that in uh, editing, therefore making these entire paragraphs I've just said useless. Anyway, it's made up of very nice material, and it's not sort of bad design, there's nothing shite on it, so I might even wear that under something else. And now, oh my god, the night is dark and full of errors, which is why there is free tip X with this Game of Thrones book. So yeah, we've got uh, Melisande, the Red Woman, on one side, and her again on the back, because it like turns out she's really old and decrepit, but uses a magic clasp thing around her neck to make herself look young. Spoilers for Game of Thrones is what I just gave you. Um, well, not exactly massive plot spoilers, but a little bit of uh, character information, I suppose. Well, I've seen these in the shops, and they were exceedingly expensive, like frighteningly pricey. Um, looks like nice things, but is it literally just... You know, oh, hang on, it tells you about Melisande. Like, and then there are days. And if you want, you can put in a date and a day of the week and what the weather was like or something, or a memo number. And then you can just write guff in it. Really, it's just an incredibly expensive uh, empty notebook just quite a nice one and it's got game of thrones on it if you like that sort of thing i do so it's quite nice but due to my job i have many notebooks already but i tell you what i haven't got <coughs> a cough apparently oh no wait i have got one of those it's the elder scrolls online loop pin these have improved massively on the grounds that they're no longer shitty little badges that say loot crate on them. They're actually a thing. And, yeah, if you like the Elder Scrolls and want a little uh, badge to go on something, that's actually very nice. And I do like the Elder Scrolls, and I uh, would like that to go on something. Haven't really played the Elder Scrolls online. It's got that kind of this-is-a-half-game thing that a lot of the MMOs have um, going on. But there we are. If you can get the social aspect up and running, it's probably a laugh in it. It's also very cheap, I noticed, on console, which is always nice. Uh, you can pick it up for almost nothing in the second-hand shops near me, and it probably doesn't work because, like, it's got an activation code. I don't know. I don't particularly care because I've just seen Snake Pliskin to get... Hang on. Big Trouble in Little China. Escape from New York together at last. My God, <clears throat> the Kurt Russell duo of doom. <laughs> and it's really annoying me that I cannot remember 
Kurt Russell's character's name from Big Trouble in Little China, and that is really annoying me because I love that film. Um, but yeah, so it's any other Kurt Russells could come and join us. How about the creepy guy from Overboard or um, the, some of those Disney films he was in where he's the world's strongest kid or whatever? Um, guy with the car from Death Proof, um, the Hateful Eight, bloody. Ooh. Ooh, that's kind of freaking me out. It looks like he's vomiting lights. He did do that in that scene, didn't he? Yeah, anyway, um, I've totally forgotten what I was saying about this. Then we were going through Kurt Russell characters, and I think I'd got as far as the cowboy type from The Hateful Eight. That was it. Don't remember this man with a giant beard. Oh, yes, I do. Well, so that's a weird thing. It's kind of Kurt Russell team-up comics. Hmm, let's have a look inside and see what we can get going on. Well, apparently the theme was magical. There we are. Let's have a read of the book. Ah, oh, I spent too long on it. Right. Jack versus Snake. Oh, Jack Burton, of course. Oh, man, that was bugging me. Namesake. Jordan lived to avoid his fathers. Now he'll traverse two worlds to put them in the ground. Well, he sounds like a very rude man. Um, yeah, it's a comic of... Big Jack Burton versus Snake Plissken. I presume that's... I don't know if that's something the world ever needed, but I'll give it a read and see what it's like. Oh, and that's your lot. Not many items, but uh, big, expensive, high-quality ones, which I suppose is a way to go. Thing is, if you don't like the Q-Fig so much, you are a bit screwed in that one. Anyway, let's have a jump cut. So here's a new one, then. This is called Infinity Crate. I don't entirely know what to expect from it. I think it might just be a sort of standard um, loot crate type thing. I don't know. Maybe it does literally contain infinity. You just open it and there's a slightly smaller box, and that is a slightly smaller box, and it just goes down, 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 until the world ends. Right. Oh, there's a t-shirt in it. Yep, I'm going for a loot crate sort of vibe, actually. Oh, God, there's a Funko Pop in it. Well... <sighs> Let's hold our breath and continue. Um, oh, actually, we have to do the T-shirt last. It's kind of underneath everything else. Right, go on. Lone Wanderer. That's nice. Which one is that, then? Which, which vault is he from? Which game? I'm thinking that's... Is that Fallout 4 with the Lone Wanderer? I don't, just don't care anymore. Because it's just got a loaf of bread for a head with uh, eyes. If they haven't even got the eyes right, I don't know if you can tell, the one on the left is uh, very sort of soft, whereas uh, the one on the right has a very hard edge to it. Wow. Is there anything they can't ruin, eh? <laughs> Funko Pops. Right, next, a, a sticker of a hand. Two stickers of hands! My god, a pair. I, well, thanks for these rotting hand things. I think I've been cut off a zombie or something. I'll be sure to use those at my next Rotting Hand sticker party, and I shall be the talk of the town! Next, Superman Crew Socks! Because that's what we need in our life. It looks like they've got capes on them. Are these actually caped socks? Is that a thing? Hang on. Yes, they actually have capes on the back. <laughs> Well done, you have earned 20 points for ridiculousness, and they are not points I give out easily. That's extremely good. Here, oh god, it's a mystery thing. A mystery thing where they've all been homogenised, because apparently Funko Pops just aren't enough. It's The Walking Dead, a TV series I've still not seen and probably never will, so um, I have to look for rare glow and blood-splattered versions. How about I don't? Um, well, I suppose I'm going to have to look it up and see what's in it, and then not give a monkey's toss. Come yeah, on. I bet it's in a little bin bag inside. Yep, they always are. And it is. I don't know what I'm saying it is. I almost certainly don't know the character. It is Sticky Jeff. He's got his own stick. Um, he looks quite angry. He's got some shoulder pads going on, some good gloves. On his back he's got a rifle and a little backpack and some sort of what I would call a helmet or mask, but it's much smaller than his head, so I'm not sure. Also, he has the cloven hooves of the Prince of Lies, therefore proving that the Walking Dead is satanic. Well, I'm glad we had that told to us all. Where would we be without these discoveries? Right, here's, here's a big cloth thing. It looks like a very hard cloth. It's a big Iron Man face, I see. So, uh, that is... It's... Ah! Right, it's an Iron Man pillow... Well, not pillow, cushion cover. Can we get a good picture of this? Here he is, looking all Iron Man-y. 
stop their crime, I have irons, which is, of course, his famous catchphrase. Yep. Well, if you've got a very big cushion and you want a picture of Iron Man on it, you know where you can get one. Probably a shop. Right. <clears throat> oh, that's the lot. Apart from the shirt. Oh my god, two t-shirts. What is this? It's a t-shirt frenzy. Can you wear them both at once when it is cold? We have Nike Air Mag sneakers, a beacon of popular culture with automatic laces. And just to get a bit more Back to the Future 2 in there, they've even got a flux capacitor diagram. Yep, they're very keen on uh, shoehorning in as much Back to the Future they can on that. Again, nice soft t-shirt though, and not a hideous design, and everybody likes Back to the Future except Freakazoids, so that's good. And finally, the t-shirt of the secondariness. Ooh, that I believe is the Knight's King from uh, Game of Thrones. Looking, well, is Looking a bit like gnarled wood, apart from his face here, which does look a bit anusy. it must be said. He's got a mouth like a bummel. That bloke's got a face like an arse. Yes, it's a cross between <laughs> arse face from Preacher, the comics, not the uh, one from the television series who looks a bit different, and the Night's King. Well, that's the thing. I think it's just supposed to be the Night's King, but it's got a definite arse face look. Anybody who remembers that. And Steve Dillon! Died recently, didn't he? Uh, the uh, artist behind Preacher. Couldn't believe it. But I did believe it. I mean, I read it and didn't question it. But Because um, why would I? But that's sad news. Poor old Mr Dillon. Ugh. Jump cut. So, a couple of the nostalgia boxes from the toy box to finish off, because you guys do seem to love them, and I really like opening them too. So why the devil don't we just do that? So these do three different types of box, but I've only got two this month. I've went for the 80s box and the girls' box. I don't know which one this is. I think it is... Um, I would guess the 80s one, judging by what we've got here, but let's have a look. Join the movement and crush capitalism. What? No, oh, no, it's something to do with this, right. Yep, this is an 80s box, because, yeah, we've got, the, got a muscle figure. Always important. This one looks like a lizardy man, which is always nice. Where's the other one? There's always another one. Ah, and that is the... Oh god, I, can, I must look up his bloody name, I can never remember it. I want to say Kinnock Man or something, but that's like a make of soy sauce or something. Um, this is the main character from uh, Muscle, or because it had a different thing in Japan. We've explained this before, but we've never explained that head wound, and we never shall. Well, the figure this month... My god, one of the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles figures, or Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles, as they were called over here, due to overzealous censorship that ended badly. If you want to know lots more about that, there's a brilliant um, series of documentaries. I want to say series, there's two of them called uh, Video Nasties. Um, well worth seeking out, and you can learn everything you want to know about the BBFC going mental and then being reformed. Anyway, this is Raphael. Hello. I'm uh, cool, but I'm also crude. Is that all right? Yep, well, no, ooh, unless... Yay! We have his weapons! Although, unfortunately, we've just got a weird punch dagger and one, one of them things and a couple of shuriken. Damn, we don't actually have his sai, which is kind of um, his trademark weapon. But he does look angry. Maybe he'll scare people off with bad language. Tits! Arse! There we are, shredders running for the hills. These were quite nice figures in their way. They're chunky, um, they've got a bit of articulation on. You can move the wrists around a bit, which is uh, positive to give more ninjury poses. Uh, I've just remembered I have an amazing Ninja Turtles figure behind me that I'm going to have to jump cut to right now. So this is Michelangelo, the party dude. Um, from, uh, as you can tell, a sort of later, more cartoony look to it. Um, he's got sort of eyes drawn and a tongue sticking out and has a clockwork action. A really good place for that, lads, yeah. Do not try this at home, it may involve wrist damage. Let's face it, it just looks like he's making a wanking sign at you, doesn't it? It's horrible. Get over there. We like you more now, Raphael. Okay, which bubblegum cards do we have? Donkey Kong, number one video. Oh my goodness. With, oh god, some original 80s um, bubblegum. Yep, that's stuck to something. Oh, it's got rots in it. Well, the stickers are Donkey Kong is better than homework. That's true, unless your homework involves something amazing 
like, I don't know, having sex with somebody beautiful or something. Oh my god, the early Jumpman pictures, before he was called Mario, he did look a bit suspicious, didn't he? Whereas Donkey Kong looks lovely. But he's the villain, he's the character you play. What is the message here, Nintendo? Ah, uh, play your own Donkey Kong. These don't work anymore, we tried last time, didn't we? Hang on, I've got a penny here, I'm going to attack one. Yeah, it's just destroying it. That's such a shame. Um, jump, says the sticker. Good plan. Stamp out Donkey Kong. Now there's a political campaign we can all get behind. Take it one step at a time, says Mario. Or Jumpman, as he was known. Or Ricky Tiki Tarvi, as he was known before that. Okay, I've made, made that bit up. And here's something I've never heard of in my life. Baseball's greatest gross-outs. Sounds very American, doesn't it? Blows bigger bubbles. Not only bloody more it does, now it just gives you bigger diseases, one imagines. Well, it's from Leaf. Even I've heard of it. Oh, God. Ooh. Yeah, we, we got some problems with the bubblegum guys. <laughs> oh. Uh, well, <clears throat> this is Tiptoe Tim, who apparently has flowers coming out of his armpits and a big mutant face and giant lips and has freaked out to the picture there. What? What's the story here? Position Team Flower Boy. Outstanding characteristics. Tiptoes around the bases as opposing players watch dumbfounded. Turn singles into home ones that way. He's a freelance florist. Best record. Crossed home plate ten times in one game. This was a religious gesture. He was praying for a hit but kept striking out. Yep, there's some baseball jokes there, guys. That's just weird. I don't really see what you're going for there, guys. I'm going to be honest with you. We've got Rat Face Robert. He has the face of a rat. Some very Shakespearean insult there. Winnie the Windbag. He blows people over because he's got a giant mutant head. That's a nice one. Evan the Terrible. There he is, biting off a baseball bat in half. He must have some teeth on him. Charlie the Chewer. Ha <laughs> ha! He's green, has monstrous hands, and also really likes bubblegum. Ralph D. Rocker. Yeah, he's got some sort of uh, Statue of Liberty style haircut going on. And these aren't very good, really, are they? Hard luck, Harry. Yep, he's um, knackered and getting his foot kicked by an autograph seeking child who looks a bit like Biff Tannen. Colin the Coward. There he is, hiding and chewing his own knee. Johnny Reb. Oh my god. <laughs> I do like the uh, bizarre placement of the mouth and teeth, but that's uh, about it from them. And Artie the announcer. Well, that's like a weird cross between garbage pail kids and baseball for you right there. What else have we got? We've got a load of stuff in here this time. Um, oh god, what is the comic? It's got some Lego on the back. We challenge you to buy as much Lego as you can and then die, you fuckers. That was Lego's least successful advertising campaign. The Defenders! A death in the family. Oh, somebody's died. And then, rather rudely, she's blowing her nose on a wreath, which is a bit of a shame. So, the Defenders, to my knowledge, were um, like a sort of not as good as the Avengers sort of thing. I think they're bringing them into the Marvel Cinematic Universe via the TV thing. So the Defenders will be like Daredevil, but also the other TV guys like Jessica Jones and Iron Fist, who's on his way. And Luke Cage, which I'm going through at the moment. There's been excellent, really good series there. Oh man, that's old Marvel Comics. It's got that look to it. Those certain colours and the uh, dithering shading. Uh, and I can apparently buy myself self-defence kung fu karate lessons. Oh my god, be an incredible hulk of a man in seven days. Good old Charles Atlas. He, what a liar he was. He wasn't an Atlas at all. He was a bloody um, weightlifter and bodybuilder. It's despicable. Right, finally we have... Oh my god, a boxed Atari 2600 game of Jungle Hunt by Taito America. Oh my god, and that is facial hair. He looks very worried, probably because he's swinging over a load of crocodiles. Um, intriguing soles to his boots there. I don't know why they're bright pink, but um, there we go. And that's Atari 2600 graphics for you. Quick! Save your true love from the masked cannibals. Swing through vines, brave a river of man-eating crocodiles, and dodge gigantic boulders. Outsmart the cannibals before they turn your sweetie into soup. Ugh. Ugh. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna presume, whoop, well, I can damage the camera that way. And I could, that was good. Isn't there some sort of instructions or something inside? There are. Ooh, this has the letter P on it. P for piss, I've ripped the bloody cartridge 
label off. Oh, well, it's still got the one on there. Unfortunately, I'm not entirely uh, sure if this game is any good, and probably won't be finding out soon, because I still haven't got myself an Atari 2600 to play these bloody games on. Um, yeah, it's just more of that. Well, that's interesting. What's the girls' box like, then? Well, we're about to find out. Right, we have more of that stuff, and oh my god, there's a giant coloured thing. What the bloody Nora? Oh, it's a beanie baby. Or oh, it's a beanie buddy. Is that like a beanie baby a bit bigger? That was a real illustrative sentence, wasn't it? So what, what is this? Does it tell you on there? No, it doesn't. It's like a sort of um, big worm thing in rainbow colours. Fair enough. It looks very, very jolly. Um, you could, it's also remarkably heavy. I think you could use it to maybe knock somebody out without making a lot of noise. Which is always useful. Yeah, that's all right, isn't it? I quite like that in a way. It's very tactile. Sort of thing you could sit there fiddling with while watching a boring film. Right, next up we have, oh god, a dog in a giant lettuce leaf in a wicker basket. This is going to be like a pound puppy or puppies in my pocket or gee whiz mama, them be some puppies or something along those lines. But yep, um, some sort of sheepdog thing going on there. There's got to be another one. There's always two of these. There we go. And oh god, that's that's got a, a big face on that dog. <laughs> It's got a bit, you've got a big mouth on you, dog. And it looks a bit sort of uh, damaged from the back, or has got a sort of quarto like figure growing in it. Quaid, stud the reactor. I can't really tell. Well, I'll put that over there and pick out, ooh, Game Boy, Game Boy Color game. Rugrats Totally Angelica. The world didn't need that, really, did it? I, I can't imagine that's really... Is it a game? Is it one of these things where you play dress-up? I don't know, and frankly, I want that to remain unknown in my brain. Don't the circuit boards in these usually take up more space than that? Mm, probably no reason for them to. Right, let's have a look at the trading cards. Free Willy 2! This time it's personal! And Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Going for a real sort of old-fashioned witch look there. Well, let's have a look at Free Willy 2 first. A pop-out card in every pack. Flies out the pack, pierces your fucking eye. Thanks, Free Willy. I didn't know there was a Free Willy 2. What do they do? Some bugger um, capture him again? I don't know. What is the actual subtitle? The Adventure Home. Um, well, it's a hobby, isn't it? Get captured, escape. You know, by the time it was to Free Willy 14, Free was probably sick of it. And inside... Oh my god, that was a bit of work. Help on the way. Help in the form of the world's whitest people. Fantastic. And we've got Go Jesse. He's familiar. What actor plays him? Did he appear in something years later? Realising that Jesse is the whale's last hope of escaping from Wilcox and the Cove... Is the cove actually a physical cove or is it a person, just referred to as the cove? Dr. Haley tells him, him to do whatever he must to get them out. Dr. Haley and his musical comets. Man, he looks familiar, doesn't he? Um, Orcas in the wild. If you like whales, you're going to love this film. What is this? Orcas in the wild. Oh, I see. That's not actually part of the film. That's just, here's some orca whales. Dead end. Oh, God. This is where they barbecued William <laughs> and ate him at the end and made candles out of the remains. What a film it was. A piece of chocolate. That is clearly an eel of some kind, isn't it? Bloody hell, I wouldn't like to see your selection boxes. And finally, ah, right. Pop the character and fold over for lots of fun. Really? Well, I'm going to wait for my lots of fun. Oh, Glenn watches Jesse. It's Michael Madsen. Hmm. He's, he's looking a little bit suspicious. Glenn watches Jesse with the neighbourhood girls. Jesus Christ. Now that's a fetish. Um, so what's the deal? Oh, I see you go like that and then... Yeah. Uh, no, that's, that's it. That's, that's the pop-out card. That's great. Did I have lots of fun? Yes, I did. It was the most fun I've ever had. Now leave me the fuck alone. Right. Sabrina the Teenage Witch, mystical trading cards with her annoying talking cat. Look for the randomly inserted autograph and chase cards. Autograph and chase. What happens if you write your name on them, you get chased by an evil spirit or something. Did anybody read, incidentally, the recent uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch comics they made where they were like really dark horror comics and Sabrina and the witches in it were like um, sort of really horrible... Um, you know, the sort of historical horror version where they were having sort of um, 
big powwows with Satan and uh, eating flesh and all sorts of horrible things. They were very interesting, but uh, not the sort of thing you would really give the kids, put it that way. Um, more like The Witch, the recent film, than Sabina Breen of the Teenage Witch, to say the least. And there she is, rocking out with a disturbingly low cleavage line. Um, Battle of the Bands. I won because I'm magic. There, there's some hilarious cutouts with Sabrina. Oh, God, what was her boyfriend called? Harvey. Harvey, that was it. And he had an amusing surname like Crinkle or Flip Flirp or something. Witch's Brew. On Friday the 13th, Sabrina may tell a warm mortal she's a witch. However, at midnight, that person will not remember a thing they're told. But she gets them drunk after. Unfortunately, Libby overhears Sabrina's secret. So while Sabrina escorts her pals over to the other realm for a day of fun, Libby and her cheerleader groupies conspire to use this information against her rival. Damn you, Libby! What? Is that supposed to be time travel or just a shit set? Because it's kind of both. Um, first was Sabrina's feeling small about mistakes she's made and has shrunk down to six inches in height and was eaten by a spider. Um, there's some people accepting like a witch award or something what's going on there the sabrina awards don't care uh there is harvey making a monkey dance that's uh Kai oh, no i'm not gonna do the joke about it. that's what the director was doing and finally a shawl <laughs> could be a snood sabrina the grinch memories is only restored when sabrina regains the holiday spirit the holiday spirit was gin. Right, uh, I think that's a lot apart from an astonishing comic of some type. What's the back advert? You've seen the film. Now read the comic for the rescuers down under. Oh, he, was, he was a vicious bastard in that, if I remember. Didn't he die at the end of it, actually? I can't remember how that went. But yeah, The Rescuers Down Under is a sequel to The Rescuers, where they go down under. If you'd like any more information on this, please listen to that piece of audio again. Right. The Disney Weekly from October 1991. Ta I always want to say Talaspin, but it's quite clearly Tailspin. Baloo to the rescue. Goofy gets clean away. Pull out collectible film classic. Rescuers Down... Right, so I'm going to guess that Rescuers Down Under was the big film Disney was selling at the time, because it's all over this like shit on a stick. Um, yep, in, in fact, we're opening up two more of it. Um, here's some Goofy goings-ons. Never, I'm never a fan of these Disney comics, they're always a bit sort of bland. There's that weird one where um, some of the characters go to dreams within dreams and the plot is remarkably similar to Inception. Uh, there's a little thing for you to look up later. Well, that's the end of that then. Now I've got the theme tune to Tailspin stuck in my head. Great. Thanks everyone. So, um, yeah, the girls' nostalgia box not being anywhere near as good as the 80s one this time, but I must say the 80s one was particularly strong. It was full of really interesting bits and bobs. Um, and as for the boxes, the loot crate, again, you know, they're putting just a couple of higher quality items in, which is probably a good thing, but the Infinity Crate seemed to have a lot more in it. I don't know if it's more expensive or what, because um, I didn't look it up beforehand, I probably should have in retrospect, but hey! Quite a lot of stuff, and I like the two t-shirt thing, that was interesting as well. But unfortunately it did go off the scale on bloody generic figurine things that I hate, but so if you're a fan of those, well that's something you can waste your money on to distract yourself from the inevitability of death, isn't it?